Let's look at a rare queen's pawn opening called the England Gambit. So it begins d4, e5. So black is gambiting a pawn. White should accept. Black can attack it with knight to c6 and develop a piece. And white can protect it while developing a piece, knight f3. Now the main line continues queen to e7 here, attacking the e pawn again. This already looks like a suspicious opening because black is developing their queen too early and blocking in the diagonal for the dark squared bishop. The main line continues bishop to f4 very sensibly developing another piece and protecting e5 again. But I want to mention an alternative that I saw Grandmaster uh, Ben Feingold play. He likes to play knight to c3 uh, instead of bishop to f4. And I looked on Lee Chess in the database and noticed a lot of strong players on Lee Chess, including Masters, actually agree with him. Now, black can take the pawn on e5, and white can respond here with the move knight to d5, very powerful. It's attacking the queen, but it's also attacking this vulnerable c7 square, forking the king and the rook. And notice there's also pressure on the knight on e5. So black is going to have to tread very carefully here. A move like queen to d6 looks possible because it guards e5 and c7, but it doesn't work because of the move bishop to f4, um, pinning the knight, and if the knight gets out of the pin with check, then we're attacking the queen and the c7 pawn behind it. So black is going to lose material. So in this position, black needs to give up their e5 knight, needs to trade it off first, and then protect the c7 square. And again, the queen can't come up here to protect it because of the move bishop to f4. So the queen has to drop back. So all of this is forced play. And white can continue with bishop to f4, attacking c7 for a second time. Black would defend with d6. And then white can centralize their queen with queen to d4. Now if we look at the position, you'll notice white has three pieces developed, and black has none. White is ready to castle queenside and have a rook on a half-open file. White can also make use of the g file here. The e pawn can come to e4 and release the light squared bishop. So white is doing excellently. If black tries to kick the d5 knight away with the move c6, then that weakens the d6 pawn. And after castling, there's going to be a rook, a queen, and a bishop all pointed at d6. Uh, development of the king side is difficult here without trying to drive the knight away. You can't move the bishop to e7 because the g7 pawn hangs. Um, developing the knight to f6 now allows white to ruin the pawn structure after capturing on f6. So white is doing excellent in this position, even though white gave back the gambit pawn. However, let's go back to the main line, which is bishop to f4 in this position. Okay, and we're going to see some real tactical uh, fireworks, and this is how many amateur games go. Black continues queen to b4 check, forking the king and the bishop. The main line to save the bishop is bishop to d2, but let's look at a couple of alternatives. It's funny that you can actually play knight to c3 here and just give up the bishop because of the move knight to d5 forking the queen and the c7 square. And white can win the rook in the corner. However, it's not as strong as it looks. The knight on a8 will be trapped. It won't be able to come back out again. And this is not as good as the main line. So we won't look any further. Another way you might consider guarding your bishop and getting out of the check is playing queen to d2. But that's actually a mistake because black can play queen takes b2 attacking the rook in the corner 
and the only way to guard the rook is with queen to c3, but that blunders the queen to bishop to b4, pinning the queen. So queen to d2 really is not possible in this position. So back to the main line, bishop to d2. Okay, attacking the queen. So the queen will take the pawn on b2 and attack the rook in the corner. There are a couple ways to defend it. The main line continues knight to c3, defending the rook with the queen. And that is by far the best move in the position. But let's look at another alternative and see why it's not good. Bishop to c3 also guards the rook in the corner and attacks the queen. The problem with that move, though, is again black has bishop to b4, this time pinning the bishop to the king. And so black has a couple of threats. Um, he's threatening to win the bishop on c3, but he's also threatening the rook again since the bishop is pinned on c3. So the only way that um, seems to address both issues at once, well, two ways, um, one is you can play queen to d2, protecting the bishop, releasing the pin, and guarding the rook in the corner again. But the problem with that is bishop takes c3 follows, attacking the queen on d2, and if the queen takes the bishop, then white is mated. And the only other option is taking the bishop with the knight, but then you lose the rook in the corner. So white is losing in this position. So for that reason, bishop to c3 is not a good move. Um, I should mention one more option, though, after bishop c3, bishop b4. You might think, well, you can give up the exchange like this, play bishop takes b4, and allow your rook to be taken. The problem with that is, Black will not take the rook in the corner. Black will take the bishop and threaten knight takes c2, okay, forking the king and the rook. So there are two threats, knight takes c2 and queen takes a1. The only way to guard the rook on a1 is to move this knight out of the way for the queen to protect it. But the knight would be hanging on a3 or c3, and knight to d2 is no good, because it smothers your king, and it allows knight takes c2 check, forcing the loss of a queen. Okay. So the bottom line is, after the queen takes on b2, the only move in the main line is knight to c3 to protect your rook with your queen. Now there are two moves that black can make in this position. The main line is bishop to b4, but let's briefly look at an alternative, knight to b4. Knight to b4 does attack the c2 pawn like we saw earlier, trying to fork the king and the rook. Well, the best way to proceed is knight to d4, protecting c2, and rook to b1 is going to follow, kicking the queen back to a3. Black can try to kick the knight with c5, but just play rook to b1, queen to a3, and then you have knight from d to b5. Powerful move threatening the queen and a, a fork here on c7. Okay, so after that move, black is forced to play queen to a5 to protect the queen and protect c7. But you can then play a3 to kick the knight away. The knight probably wants to fall back to a6 to lend further support to the c7 square. But then knight to e4 is very powerful in this position, releasing an attack on the queen and threatening to land a knight on d6. For example, if the queen retreats to d8, then white can put one of the knights on d6 with check. Uh, black can trade a pair of minor pieces, but then he's forced to move his king. And his position is, is in tatters at that point. He has no development, and uh, white has a powerfully placed knight on d6. 
So it's a winning position for white. Okay, so going back to the main line, instead of knight to b4, you generally will see bishop to b4 in this position. Well, in that case, play rook to b1 to force the queen over to a3. And you can play rook to b3 here, forcing the queen back further and play that position. But I think it's much stronger to play knight to d5 here, threatening a fork on c7 again. Now, black might try to protect that with bishop to a5. Okay. Notice trading the bishop on d2 is not really going to work because queen takes d2 renews the threat of knight takes c7. And there's no way to guard the c7 square since the queen has a5 covered. Queen to a5 will just get traded off and then white will take on c7. So black has to prepare against the coming fork, and the best way to do that is to slide the rook over and give up the c-pawn, because playing king to d8 to protect the c-pawn runs into queen to g5 check, giving up the g7-pawn. Okay, so this simply uh, doesn't work. Bishop takes d2. So black can try bishop back to a5, but after that, a strong move to remember here is rook to b5. Okay. The threat is to remove the defender. Rook takes a5, knight takes rook, and then the knight comes to c7 with a fork. So black has no defense against that. He can trade off the bishops again, but he's in the same situation he was before trying to protect c7. And he's really forced to move the rook over and give up that pawn. Okay, so that's as far as I want to take the, the main line. We had a lot of deviations there, so let's review just the main line one time. So the England gambit is e, d4, e5. You take the pawn. Black attacks it. You protect it, black attacks it again, you protect it again. Those moves are actually interchangeable, by the way. Sometimes black might play queen to e7 first and then knight to c6. But you will transpose to this position. Then queen to b4 check, forks the king and bishop. Bishop back to d2 to save it is the main line. The queen takes the pawn on b2, threatening the rook in the corner. You have to play knight to c3 there. It's the only move. Then bishop to b4 is the usual move there. Rook to b1, forcing the queen over to a3. And then knight to d5. Powerful move, attacking c7. If the bishop falls back to a5, probably the only try, then the move to remember is rook to b5. If the bishop then trades on d2, then the fork on c7 or the pawn on c7 is lost because king to d8 runs into queen to g5 check. So the rook will probably slide over and you can take that pawn on c7. All right, thanks for watching the England Gambit.